So a couple of days ago, SeaWorld announced their new coaster, The Pipeline. Not, not exactly the best name, I'm not gonna lie. And this is basically what we were all expecting. I'm pretty sure B&M announced this coaster a little while back and we all saw that it's a lot tamer than we were expecting, but now we have a full layout and an official SeaWorld announcement to get a better sense. And yeah, it's tame, but that's not exactly a bad thing. SeaWorld Orlando needs more intermediate coasters, if that's what you can even call this thing. That's why they built Icebreaker, which is definitely more family oriented, because before Icebreaker, you had like Super Grover's Boxcar Derby to Journey to Atlantis to make them. So Icebreaker was put in there to quite literally break the ice for new coaster riders. Actually, that's not literal. It's still a metaphor, but you get what I mean. This is another coaster to bridge the gap between Little Family Ride and Monster B&M, even though this is still another Monster B&M. So I think it being at SeaWorld Orlando is pretty cool. Another thing this shows us is that SeaWorld is back to building large-scale coasters again. Maybe not at the rate that they were before the pandemic with five massive coasters a year, but this is still a B&M. Like, it's not a small investment. I know some people might say that this was scheduled before the pandemic and coasters take, like, three years to plan and roll out, but the pandemic was, like, two, almost three years ago and I honestly think that mid-pandemic they ordered this thing. Like not as the parks were shut down obviously but there was a period right after the parks reopened where Florida parks were balling. They were packed and doing some of the best numbers they've ever done and even if they didn't Florida parks weren't closed for like that long so it makes sense that they'd want to invest money into their arguably their biggest theme park as it was performing great fresh out of the pandemic. Wow, that was a run-on sentence and a half. So yes, it's a great fit. That's all fine and dandy, but what about the ride itself? What actually is this mysterious surf coaster that B&M has been working on for so long? I speculated that it was their take on an intense launch coaster with extreme elements and a typical sit-down seating a while ago, and I was very wrong very, very wrong. It is a launch coaster of sorts. There are launches, but it's more of like a fixed stand-up coaster, a second gen. The main thing that's different here is A, it's less intense, and B, it has kind of this bobbing mechanism. We're going to talk about both, but let's start with A, it's less intense. Originally, stand-up coasters were regular loopers that they just made you stand up on, and this kind of sucked. It's not a fun experience standing up on a ride with the only thing to rest on is this little bicycle seat that if it's set up wrong, well, I'll just say for us guys, it's a really rough time. You can't be doing massive loops and corkscrews and huge drops with a setup like this. It's just a recipe for a miserable experience. So they scaled it down a little bit for this ride and it's more turn-based with smaller and more drawn out inversions. And that might sound boring, but it fits perfectly with the surfing theme that the ride and the ride model is trying to simulate. The bigger change though, is this new bouncing mechanism. And I'm like 99% sure this is gonna make it more comfortable. I don't know why or how, but I just feel like it will. Not being stuck in a rigid position while standing on a ride just seems like it would make you the whole experience so much smoother. It'll take some of the pressure off your legs that were basically hitting gym on the old stand-up coasters. Like on the old ones, they'd have to have a whole procedure to make sure your legs didn't break on the ride. They'd be make like- Make sure your feet are all the way back against the ride with slight bend in the knees. Do not lock your knees at any point on the ride. Remain in a standing position with your feet shoulder width apart and straight posture. I know I'm making a joke out of this, but like seriously, that's what they actually will tell you before you dispatch on Green Lantern at Great Adventure. So yeah, I'm glad that they're fixing this, but I also want to talk about the launch. This is B&M's first time making a dedicated launch model. They've done launches on coasters before with Thunderbird and Hulk twice with those tires, but they've never offered a model that consistently would have a launch. I think it's a step closer to a fully dedicated sit-down launch coaster with extreme elements that I had speculated about before, which isn't a bad thing. This also has that launch and airtime hill thing. I don't know, it's just something I kind of wanted to point out. It's not really that big of a deal, but you know, it's kind of cool. But where else could these rides pop up? Where else besides SeaWorld Orlando would want one of these things? What other park would want a ride model that does this? Because like, this does seem very specific to this park. Not just because of the surf name, but also because of the way it just fits in the lineup, like I said before. Like, I really don't know what other park is gonna be looking for a stand-up launch family coaster. I feel like for a lot of parks, if they're gonna go for as big of an investment as B&M, they'll just save up the extra dough and go for a hyper or a dive. Something so neat like this doesn't really seem to be viable when B&M has so many other mass appealing options. Best case scenario, I think maybe two more are built and then it fades out. I could see SeaWorld doing another one of these at like SeaWorld San Antonio, maybe Cedar Fair trying out one of these at like a mid-sized park like King's Dominion or something, but I really don't think it's going to explode in popularity and become one of B&M's classics like an invert or a hyper. But I don't know, maybe I'm just completely wrong. Maybe this ride will be an overwhelming success in every SeaWorld park and every Cedar Fair park and every Six Flags will buy one. Who knows? All I know is that I'm happy that this is being built at all and it's actually something I kind of want to ride. It's at least more interesting than their last edition with Icebreaker. Anyways, that's basically going to be it for this video. I know it was a relatively short one, but I just wanted to give you my two cents on the topic. We're really close to 50k, so if you're not subscribed, then you know what to do. I'm trying to get it by the end of the year, but thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you next time.